Canvas has a very nice integrated help system in case you're not sure about a particular feature and you and the students can find it in the upper right hand corner. You would just simply go up and click on the word help and immediately the screen turns gray and you're presented with all of these options. The top option is only for students and it's interesting because a lot of times a faculty member when asking for help is thinking about technical questions whereas a student may actually have an academic question. So the student would simply click on ask your instructor a question and it generates a little email. The student would pick which course they have a issue with they can type their message and it will go directly to the instructors that are in that particular course. The rest of the help system is identical. All of us have the same options. We'll start at the bottom with request a feature. If you are using Canvas and you've used another LMS or if you think that there's something that would really benefit a lot of users, you can click that. You can request a feature. It will also allow you to search the user database to find out if other people have requested that same feature. The next one up is Ask the Community and it, there is a very rich user community with Canvas and Canvas uh, will have all of the users reading questions, answering questions, and a lot of times you'll get a response directly from the community of users and if you can't find it in the actual guide you can probably get a response from one of the users. When you report a problem it actually goes into the distance ed email here at the college and that will show up in one of our email boxes. We'll attempt to solve the problem, get back to you. If it's something that needs to be escalated to the Canvas administrator, we certainly would do that. And then we come to the actual guides. When I click on the guides, I'd like you to notice that instead of just opening up the guides in the current window or the current tab, it's actually going to open up a new tab here. I'm going to click search the guides. I now have a brand new tab and that's very convenient because a lot of students when they click the X to close the tab they're just immediately put back to Canvas. Had it replaced the tab when they close it they would be logged out and would have to start over again. So this is what the guides look like. You can see that once you're here you can go to the community uh, if you would rather search there. These are the guides. As you come down here, we've got some getting started or quick start guides, one for the student, one for the instructor. We also have the bigger guides for the instructor, the student, and all of these other users. And you can also uh, use Canvas on a number of mobile devices. One of the reasons we chose Canvas is because it is device and operating system independent. <clears throat> it will work on the Windows operating system, it will work in the Mac environment, it will work on iPads, Android phones, Android tablets, so everything it really does allow for great flexibility. So let's see if we go into the instructor's guide what it looks like. It opens up and it's actually situ uh, put together like an FAQ or a frequently asked questions. Down the right hand side you can see all of the various chapters. So if I was interested in learning more about an, an announcement let's say, I would click on the word announcement and then there's a whole series of questions. So what are announcements? And when I click on that what they've done is they've done a lot of screenshots over here. It talks about viewing announcements, when would I use them, you can see that the screenshots are there and, the, and it's highlighted so you can actually see where you need to go. And anything you're looking for you should be able to find it. When you close this tab as I said you're immediately brought back into the Canvas system and if I close the help screen I'm right back where I started from. So that pretty much handles everything across the top except for the word settings. So we'll click and go into the settings for you as you uh, as your individual user. You'll take a look that your name is up here. If you would like to add a picture, you simply hover over the area, click and upload a digital picture. Most of these settings cannot be changed, 
However, I am going to show you the button that says Edit Settings because it has a particularly important function. When I click Edit Settings, now it will allow me, because I'm logged in, I can change my password at any time. So you don't need to go through that external linking to your CCP email. That's only if you have forgotten your password. Once you're logged in, you can change your password at any time. The other thing while we're on the screen that's very important are in the upper right are the ways to be contacted. Again, if you're a new Canvas user, you probably simply only have one way listed, and that would be your ccp.edu email address. However, you can add additional email addresses. You can also add uh, Facebook accounts. You can add text messaging. You can add any of these other registered services down here, LinkedIn, Twitter, Delicious, uh, Skype, Google Docs, Facebook, all of these can be added in. And the reason that you would want to add additional ways to be contacted is because as you add all of these contact informations, uh, you first of all should know that no one but you will see this. The students cannot see this screen, so therefore they won't know your additional email addresses or Facebook accounts or text messaging numbers. However, when you add all of these ways to contact, if you wanted to add an email address, of course, you simply click Add Email, type in the new email address, register that email, then you would need to go to that email address, open it up, click the link that brings you back here. If you wanted to add a cell phone number for text messaging, you can put a cell phone number in there, pick your particular carrier, and register. You'll immediately get a text message with a code, and you'll need to come back and type that code in to register your phone. The reason for all of these ways to contact would be over here on the left-hand side where it talks about notifications. So I'm going to click Notifications, and by default, if you're new to Canvas, you only have a single column here called email address with ccp.edu and you have the default settings listed on your screen. However, if you have multiple ways to be contacted, you can set how you would like to be notified if the due date changes on a particular assignment. I will be receiving a weekly update to my ccp.edu address, but I will be receiving an ASAP or immediate notification as a text message. And you can see that when I hover over here, I get choices. I can have a check mark, which is immediate. I can have the clock symbol, which is once a day. I can have the calendar icon, which says once a week. And I could click the X and don't send me anything to this particular notification venue because I'm getting it somewhere else. And as you scroll down, you can see that just about every part of the course has some way to notify a student that you have made a change or an addition to the course and you're going to also receive notifications if people post to your discussions, submit work, and everything like that. So that's the customization part of Canvas having notifications. The other thing that we can do while we are in this screen is we can take a look at the f files section. A lot of faculty like to upload a variety of documents allowing students to download and read files while they are in Canvas or they can download them for offline and we can put the files into each individual course or if you are in this section which is the settings section you can come over to files and you can see a global view of all the courses and all of your file folders so I will click on the files link and the first thing that comes up is my personal folder, and we each get one of those. And my personal folder, I can put files out here that I want to be able to store or archive. But if I really want to use this the best, I would come down to the link that says See Files for All Your Courses. When I click there, it will open up a folder for every course that I'm associated with. 
and here are all the various courses. So for example, my test class, if I click there, you can see I'm now looking at my test class because this is your standard Windows view where I have all of the folders on the left and the contents of that folder on the right. You'd like to know that this is the name of my course and when I come over to the right hand side I can add files into that folder. I can also add folders because I can create as many folders and subfolder systems as I think is appropriate. Every time I hover over one of these folders or these file names a gray bar appears and as I go across the gray bar you'll see three icons. Trash can of course means I can delete this file. The pencil is a very uh, common icon that we're going to see in Canvas that allows us to rename or edit things. And this might be a new one to you. This is a padlock. And if I lock the file, I can have the files sitting here waiting for a particular date. And the students will not have access to this file until that particular date. So if you choose to put files out there, but you'd rather the students not be able to access them, you simply lock the file, put a date, and on that date the file becomes unlocked and it's then available to the students. So this is our whole file structure. And now what I think we should do is go to a, uh, a course and just take a look at what it looks like. I'll hover over courses. I will come down and just select one of the courses that I'm associated with. And by default, the, you're taken to the home screen. Now this is very important because the first time you visit a course, it will tell you that this course is what they call unpublished. Unpublished means that you are the only person who has access to view and edit the class. The students cannot even see this course right now because it is not published. As it says, only teachers can see the course until you publish it. Now publishing is a very easy thing to do because down on the bottom we have this large gray window that popped open and this is our course setup checklist. And you can see that the last thing on the list is to publish your course. You should know that once you click the button and publish the course, there is no way to unpublish the course. So you may want to spend some time developing your course, putting in your files, creating your assignments, because every time, as you saw in the notifications area, every time you do something to a course, that generates a notification that's automatically sent to the students. So the fact is, if you're going to be doing a lot of work in the course, you probably want to do all of that work before you publish the course, just so you don't bog down the student's email account or text messaging with all of the notifications. Once you get most of your work done, you can publish the course, and obviously once it's published, you can still make as many modifications or edits as you desire. It's just that each time you do that, the students will receive a notification. This gray area, or the course setup checklist, is kind of taking up half the screen because it's very important information letting you know that the course is not published. But to get it out of your way, you can simply come to the blue X, and when I click this blue X, the screen will go away, but it will become a button up here on the top called the course setup checklist, and clicking that I can toggle this back and forth uh, to keep it in my face so I can see that it's not published or I can remove it so that I can work with the course. So by default all students are brought to the home screen when they click home or when they log into the course and this is by default your home page layout. You can change that to any one of the five options here. Normally by default people are always brought to the so-called recent activity homepage, and this is the one you are probably seeing on your screen with the first time you enter a course. And the recent activity would talk about discussions and assignments and activities. However, if that's not something you want the students to see, again, you have complete control and you can change the home page layout and pick one of the options here. Uh, you can create your own pages by clicking pages on the left 
You can type up anything you want the students to read when they enter the course. We can create modules, which will I'll put a little structure to our course that we're going to do in the next workshop when we deal with assignments. Uh, you can show the list of assignments that you've created, or you can show that same assignment list but also include a syllabus. So you can choose any of these, and when you're finished, you simply say, update the layout. And then the students will see that particular layout, and you get this green check box at the top, check mark, that says your course was successfully updated. There isn't a lot to go over right now because there are three other workshops to deal with, but you can see that there's many, many links here on the left. You'll see some are grayed out. However, for faculty members, they are always available. Whether they are grayed out or not, you can click on any one of them and they will all work. The only one I would like to point out right now would be the word settings. And when you click on the settings link, you'll see that we have five tabs of information in the center. We'll talk about course details when we deal with the gradebook. If I click on navigation, you'll notice that these are the links that the students see when they come into the course. So you have complete control how they are arranged. If I think that the people icon should be higher, you simply click and drag it someplace, put it in the order that you want it. If I think that there's no reason for the students to see outcomes, I can simply click, drag it down below this line, drag items here, and anything down here the students will not see. Whatever order you put them here, that's the order in which they'll appear for the students. Don't forget to click Save. And when you click Save, they are now reordered the correct way that you want the student to see it. The other thing on the settings area that's important would be all the way to the right. We have a bunch of links here. When you import content, you can start with an empty course shell and you can import all of the content from a previous course that you have taught making it extremely easy to move forward from semester to semester and we can cover that in a subsequent workshop and the last thing I'll point out is that once you've made changes if you want to see exactly what the student sees you would click on the student view button and if you'll notice your name is up here being logged in as the user when I click the student view I am now logged in as the test student, you're no longer yourself. This is what the student really sees. You can go through here and pretend that you are a student, including reading assignments and submitting work so that you can test that it actually works the way you want it to do it. And then to leave the student view, you go to the lower right corner and click leave student view. And now you're back being your own user. So I hope you've gotten a lot out of this workshop. We've tried to go through, as I said, your basic login, how to create a password, how to log in, all of the navigation through the navigation dashboard at the top, all of the various links, settings, logging out and help, and then a quick overview of your first course. So I hope you'll be able to come back and check out our other videos where we'll talk about creating modules, assignments, uploading a syllabus, working with the gradebook, and actually doing collaboration. So this is Arnold de Blasi in the Academic Computing Department, and thank you for joining us today.